So this is a quick overview of um, setting up um, a pathfinding or navigation system inside Unity. Uh, I'm going to use the NavMesh and NavMesh agent that comes uh, with Unity, but I'm going to access this content through um, the NavMesh and NavMesh agents or, or the pathfinding actions that um, we can we can get from uh, the developers of Playmaker. Uh, I'll post a link in the video comments, but basically if you go to uh, Hatong Games or you know search for the developers of Playmaker and you go to their wiki and go to their add-on section, um, they have a, um, a set of actions dedicated for the Unity pathfinding system. And so you can download those packages here. Just make sure that you're um, using the right version um, based on, on the version of Unity you're using. So, but again, I'll, I'll post this link uh, in, in the comment section um, or the info section of this video. So I have this little snowman guy who's kind of wandering around and this is just using a really simple system um, of randomly selecting uh, a, a game object and moving towards that, that game object. And so, um, you know, if I were to jump out and, and look at my scene view while this is running, um, we can just kind of take a, a look at what this guy is doing. You can see he's, he's floating. Um, so it's a imperfect system. It's not taking into account um, some of the obstacles that are inside the environment. Uh, and in fact, depending on uh, one, once it's, we'll see here that'll probably pass through this cube um, as it moves directly towards this uh, this waypoint here. And so it's definitely, you know, a glitch. But this is sort of a, a, a very simple solution um, to get a basic patrol. Uh, we covered that in, in some of the earlier game design classes for um, just a real basic patrol state. Um, but what I want to do is I want to make this a little bit more intelligent and make a version of this snowman that takes into account um, the environment and, and some of the nuance of the terrain here. So what I'm going to do is select my little snowman grunt here and duplicate it. I'll just move this off to the side. So this will be the snowman that I want to uh, make a little bit smarter. And I'm going to call this um, a snowman nav or a snowman grunt nav or it'll be using this, this nav mesh and a nav agent. And so I'm going to remove, I, I have this real simple state machine that just does a look at, it selects a random game object. Um, and then moves towards that random game object. And that's how it was kind of finding these waypoints that are scattered around. Um, but I'm going to right click and just remove that state machine. And uh, I'll add another state machine um, later to access um, some of the nav, uh, the nav mesh agent components here in a few minutes. But before I do, I'll walk through the workflow of um, setting up a nav mesh that this snowman can recognize. And it's, it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to go to the window pull down menu and I'm going to open up navigation. So I have mine nested over here and all I need to do is, is bake a navigation mesh. Now, before I do, I want to point out that um, the workflow here is that we'll select the objects that we want to uh, take into account for the nav mesh. In this case, I'll select the terrain. Um, and what I'm looking for here is that navigation static is turned on. Um, and any object that has navigation static turned on or checked um, will be taken into account for this uh, uh, this pathfinding or, or, or nav mesh that we're about to bake. So if I go down here to these blocks and I see these blocks kind of scattered around and I'm just kind of clicking through these blocks, um, the block one through six you can see is set as navigation static, but I left this block, this first block instance, um, out of the equations so that we can kind of compare and contrast. So it's this, this cube that's sitting here um, while these larger cubes are, are taken into account um, for the, the nav mesh here. So we can go through and select anything that we want to account for. Um, so I'll just kind of go back to the train even though it's unnecessary and I'll hit the bake button. Um, when I bake, uh, you'll see down here that there's a little uh, um, uh, process uh, bar here, a little status bar. And it's given us an idea of, of what's going on. And when it's done baking, it'll give us a preview of the navigation mesh and what has been accounted for. Um, so you can see here, um, we get this preview that pops up and then we get these cubes that are, that are accounted for. And, and it's given us a, a little uh, indication as to how these are being accounted for. In fact, if we zoom in here and look at um, 
uh, the edge, we can see the distance here. Um, so this object, in the case of the terrain and, and these blocks, have been accounted uh, for in this nav mesh. If I go to the bake tab, we have some options about how the nav mesh has been baked and we can adjust the radius, which is the, the really the gap between um, this object or this wall and uh, how close it can get to it. Um, there are things like max slope, um, uh, how tall our, our agent or our object is that's wandering around uh, inside our environment. Um, things like a slope height, so what kind of angle we can take into account when moving across the train. And in fact, if I look over here, you can see this slope in the train um, seems like it's, it's eligible for navigation, whereas there's some items back here in the background that are obviously part of the train, but are showing up um, that don't have this uh, nav uh, agent baked in. So these are these are kind of um, not eligible for uh, our object to move around on, unless it manages, you know, in this case, to get up on top of the mountains back here. Um, so that's really what's going on in terms of the preview. So all I've done at this point is gone to Window, Navigation, and in the Objects menu, just determined what objects um, I want to include as um, uh, part of this navigation static. Okay, so anything that's checked will be will be uh, pulled in. Hit the bake button. If I want to clear this navigation map, I can hit the clear button and that will remove the navigation. Now, if I select this cube um, that was not factored in the first time and I'll just flip on navigation static and I'll bake it once more, you'll see that it'll bake everything and this time around it'll count for this cube. Now, once we have our static mesh, uh, our, our navigation mesh baked, um, we can uh, utilize this information um, to uh, establish uh, what's called a nav mesh agent on, in this case, I'll, I'll use this snowman. So I'm gonna select my snowman uh, grunt nav. Now, um, the first thing I need to do is, I'm gonna jump over the inspector here. Um, the first thing I need to do is add a component and tell this snowman to use a nav mesh agent. So I'll go to the component window and I'm looking for navigation and I just want to add a nav mesh agent. And there's some options in here um, that we can we can fine tune and tweak. And if you need more information, you can always click on this little help button inside this component. It'll take you to the live documentation, but it's pretty straightforward in terms of, of what these values are. Um, we can emulate the size of the agent and how fast it moves around the environment and so on. But it's important that we have the nav mesh agent added in order for this to work. Um, the next thing that I'll do is I'll access um, some uh, some actions or some scripts within Playmaker um, to get this snowman um, one to figure out where it's going in this nav mesh. So we'll create a destination, um, and then we'll tell the uh, snowman to move uh, along a nav mesh. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a state machine and I'll just kind of move this over. Now this state, this is going to be uh, an init state or an initialization state and I'll add a finished transition and pass it to another state. So this is, you know, pretty standard practice for initializing uh, any kind of variables or information at the, at the start of the game or the level or at the, when this uh, game object is spawned and I'll pass it over to state one. Um, so, uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to set a destination and, and I'll, I'll do this by going into the nav mesh agent category in Playmaker. And again, if you're missing nav mesh or nav mesh agent, you just need to jump on to, uh, the Playmaker the developer of Playmaker, go to their website and download that, um, that package. So I'm looking to set destination, but I'm going to set destination as a specific game object. Um, I could use a, a coordinate system or I could uh, use a, you know, use a vector three or, or, or um, get some information uh, from our environment. But what I want to do is just I want to point to a game object. So I'm going to use the set agent destination as game object. Uh, and I'll add that. Now, again, I'm doing this on the initialization state because we will we'll set this one time. Um, and then in state one, we'll, we'll move towards it. Okay. So the game object uh, that we want to use, uh, that we want to um, set the destination for is the owner. In this case, it's the snowman. 
But our destination object, um, we need to either establish or, or pick one of our, our objects inside the scene. So what I'll do is I'll just create a cube and this cube I'll call it destination or destination one. Uh, and I'll just kind of move this to uh, a location uh, where I want my little snowman to go. So I'll tap the F key to zoom in on this and just make sure that this is in a uh, decent location. So again, I've, I've placed it somewhere back here on this uh, um, slope here. And I'll select my snowman grunt and I'm just gonna move this into a slightly more challenging uh, position for it to get to this destination. So in the state machine on the snowman, um, on the initialization state, we're gonna drag in the destination object in the destination field. And so now it acknowledges or it looks to that object as the destination uh, for this nav agent, okay? Uh, when that's finished, we'll pass it over to state one. And this state one, I'll just call, we'll call it move. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll do a, um, we'll do an agent move command. Um, so again, that's in the nav mesh agent category. And it's on state two, and we'll just do, time maker's getting a little funny on me today, or Unity, one of them one of the two. Uh, so I'm just going to add this uh, agent move and it's, you know, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We don't need an offset in this case, or at least I don't think we do. Um, uh, it should, should be just fine. Um, the game object that we're using is the owner. So in other words, we're telling the owner, our snowman grunt nav, uh, simply to move. And it knows what its destination is because we established that in the init state. Okay. Now it's moving according to trying to get to the destination that we've determined. And of course, that's something that's dynamic. We could change that from state to state to different objects, or we could move this object around. Um, and it's gonna move according to this nav mesh agent component uh, relative to um, the nav mesh that we baked in before. So let's see if this thing works. I'll hit the play button and I'm paying attention to uh, this snowman over here on the left, I can see it's it's often moving somewhere. It's wandering, and I'll just jump out into the scene view here for a moment and try to visually kind of track this. Um, and so you'll notice that our snowman's moving and he's launching snowballs. I don't, I know why, but I don't know why that's. Uh, probably should have turned that snowball off. But you can see he's tracking the the, the train. He's moving up. Um, I'll see if I can select and grab this destination. And this is something that's dynamic. So as we move this around, this is the current um, position it's trying to get to. And if it gets too high or to an ineligible position, it, it won't go as far as it needs to. I gotta move this around here. And... Okay, but you can see that it'll dynamically follow this. Well, in addition to following this object, um, it'll take into account anything that we've kind of flagged as a static object. Um, and so I'll just kind of move this around. You can see that it's it's going to take into account this obstacle. It'll walk around this obstacle. And uh, of course, it's, you know, this destination is dynamic. It's wherever uh, we place it. So this is kind of a cool thing. And this is obviously a much more intelligent system um, than this just real simple move towards a specific waypoint because we can take into account uh, stuff in the environment. And so if we wanted to be super fancy about this, um, and, and really kind of build some AI into our enemies for our first person snowball fight, um, you know, we would start to do things like maybe um, randomly select uh, or not so randomly uh, select the destination or the goal of this object. Um, and depending on proximity to the player, maybe it's, um, you know, kind of on patrol between a couple of different destination points. Um, but if the player gets close, maybe the destination becomes the player temporarily or a point near the player. Um, so this can be a, a really useful kind of thing to um, dynamically track, uh, not just the, the, the player or a destination, but also take a, a, into account all kinds of obstacles. Um, and we could push this a little bit um, you know, further and say that not only can we dynamically establish uh, what the destination is based on a game object, but we can also start to calculate line of sight um, for our enemy, really kind of adding some uh, basic uh, AI to this object to say, well, I'm not gonna launch a snowball unless I know that I have a clear line of sight uh, to my player. 
uh, or clear line of sight to another target object. It doesn't necessarily have to be the player. Uh, it could be another goal. Maybe it's um, you know some kind of um, barrier or fortification um, uh, or something like that. So um, you know we could do some line of sight stuff along with some pathfinding stuff and really make our enemies uh, more intelligent than just kind of having things on a timer and have some basic behavior trees of okay if the player is close. Um, then go from a defensive or a patrol state to an active uh, attacking state. But again, that's kind of the fun of developing the nuance of um, some basic AI for enemies. Um, so again, just kind of a, a, a high level overview of a basic nav mesh agent and how to activate it and utilize it using Playmaker. Uh, so have fun with it. As always, if you have any questions, just uh, contact me. So have fun.